Hey kids, welcome to another edition of our virtual summer camp series. My name is Tiffany Owen and I'm an instructional coordinator for Fort Stanton and Lincoln Historic Sites down here in southern New Mexico. I hope you'll join me at the end of this lesson to learn how to make a whirly gig. This is a fun craft that you can do at home on a lazy summer afternoon. It's easy and only takes a few supplies, which you probably already have in your house, so be sure to stick around. You know, I have worked for the New Mexico Historic Sites for three and a half years now, but before this adventure, I went to college to pursue a degree in occupational therapy. Have you ever heard of occupational therapy? If not, you're not alone. Most people think that occupational therapy has something to do with getting injured at work. Actually, occupational therapy, or OT as we call it for short, helps people with all sorts of disabilities, diseases, and other issues. Many people are familiar with physical therapy, which helps get your body working again after you've been sick or injured. But occupational therapy is different because it is holistic. That means that the therapy is intended to deal with your whole self, your physical issues, but also the issues in your mind that might affect your recovery. Many of you probably know someone who is or was in the military and maybe someone who was deployed overseas or injured in a war. Some soldiers come home with physical injuries or traumatic brain injuries that make it difficult to do things that they've known how to do for most of their life. An occupational therapist is often the person called in to teach a wounded warrior new ways to eat, dress, cook, and even drive a car. Now, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with a historic site like Fort Stanton? Well, after the Indian Wars ended and the United States military no longer needed a presence in this area, our beloved Fort Stanton could have been abandoned and her story might have ended right then and there. But instead, the fort was in continuous use for almost 165 years. She has lived many lives and had many purposes. After the soldiers left, she began a new existence as a place of healing. First, for patients from all over the country who had a terrible lung disease called tuberculosis. Then later, as a training school for people with cognitive disabilities. And occupational therapy was a part of Fort Stanton's story throughout much of her history. So let's find out what occupational therapy, or OT, is all about. If you've ever done a fun project or any kind of art or craft, you've already experienced OT in action, but you probably didn't realize all of the benefits you were getting just from doing something fun. You probably never thought of it before, but making crafts and doing things that are creative is not just fun and enjoyable, but it develops all kinds of cognitive and biomechanical skills that you don't even realize. You think that you're just doing something fun. Did you know that every time you move, your body and brain are coordinating to make that movement happen? Your brain sends a signal that travels at warp speed to your muscles and tells them how to move, in what direction to move, and even how much to move. The word motor isn't just a car part. The original meaning of the word motor is to produce a motion or action. And there are two types of motor skills for different muscles in the body. Gross motor skills are big movements that your large muscles make, such as when you're running, swimming, doing jumping jacks, or climbing on a ladder. The patients who came to Fort Stanton as tuberculosis patients used gross motor skills when they did their exercises on the parade ground each day. Fine motor skills use the small muscles in your hands, fingers, feet, and toes for activities such as writing, buttoning a shirt, tying shoes, or typing on a computer. The soldiers getting occupational therapy in this photo are using fine motor skills to hold drawing pencils and paintbrushes. 
You've probably never thought about how much your brain has to work just to keep your body moving throughout the day. Now, imagine you are a soldier returning home from battle and you've unfortunately had to have your arm amputated. How hard would it be to get dressed with only one arm? To find out, sit on one of your hands and then try to button your shirt or tie your shoes. <laughs> Hopefully this will never happen to you, but if it does, an occupational therapist could help you find new ways to make it through the day. Occupational therapy first emerged as a profession over a hundred years ago, just after World War I, when soldiers started coming home injured or disabled. Many of them had long hospital stays. Why they recovered from nurses noticed that when they gave the men a craft to work on, it not only helped them regain strength, coordination, dexterity, and motor skills, but they seemed to regain a sense of purpose and their mood improved. Many of these men suffered unseen disabilities such as trauma, anxiety, and depression because the injuries they had sustained in battle made it impossible to return to work and provide for their families. Learning a new skill through OT helped give them hope that they might still be able to provide for their families just in a different way. As healthcare professionals noticed more and more positive results in their patients, word spread and the use of crafts started to be used as a therapy in more and more settings. At tuberculosis sanatoriums like Fort Stanton, patients were forbidden to work or do anything strenuous. Their fragile condition often left them very weak, so making crafts like doing basket weaving or making toys helped fill the long hours in between medical treatments. Scientists began publishing research that proved the physical and cognitive improvements that could be made just from the act of making arts and crafts. In addition to using your muscles and your brain, you are also engaging and enhancing your five senses. Can you guess how many of the five senses these young potters are using? Yes, these students are using four of their five senses when making a bowl on the pottery wheel. But wait, <laughs> one of our senses is missing. Which of your five senses is one that you would definitely not use when working with clay? That's right, taste. The sense of taste is known as gustatory perception. So let's hope these kids aren't planning to taste their clay. Yuck! As if your brain doesn't have enough to do just sending signals to your muscles to move, it also engages in all kinds of cognitive skills while you're creating something. Occupational therapists who work in schools, nursing homes, or in mental health facilities often spend a lot of time using crafts to develop skills such as decision making, planning, following direction, attention to task, problem solving, concentration, coordination, self-control, sequencing, delay tolerance, time awareness, and many more. Research has revealed that perhaps the most significant benefit to crafting is the emotional lift that human beings get from the act of creating something. While using your hands and all of your other senses creatively, you are making your own choices for colors and materials, you're expressing emotions through your art, revealing your mood, feeling accomplishment when you learn something new, setting goals, sometimes socializing with friends while you work together, making memories of home and nostalgia, feeling generosity when you make something for someone else, and hopefully you get a boost of self-esteem when you show your work to someone and they love it. Throughout history, occupational therapists have been healing bodies and minds. And Fort Stanton played a part in that legacy. Fort Stanton and Lincoln Historic Sites continue to promote this tradition of healing through occupational therapy at our special events and school tours. Children attending Fort Stanton Live and the Rio Bonito Folk Fest develop their motor, cognitive and perceptual skills by learning about the folk art of quilting. Some use the quilt boards and manipulatives to recreate a traditional quilt pattern, while others chose to design their very own original quilt square. 
Special events at both Lincoln and Fort Stanton historic sites frequently include crafting activities for kids because of the many hidden OT benefits. What may seem like a mindless or even childish activity is actually developing the body and minds of the children. As they fold the paper and manipulate the pieces of their craft, they are enhancing fine motor skills, bilateral coordination, hand strengthening, grasp skills, dexterity, and muscle tone. Many of these skills reinforce improved handwriting. Meanwhile, while they think they're just doing something fun, their minds are expanding cognitive abilities, attention to tasks, concentration, problem solving, coordination, self-control, time awareness, delay tolerance, following direction, and sequencing. Local students attending our spring school tours get to walk through the somewhat spooky hallways of the 1936 Tuberculosis Hospital where they end up in the sunlit therapy room on the second floor. There, the students make their own pinwheels. In addition to the physical act of creating the pinwheel, the sensory system is in on the act too. As students choose their colors, fold the paper, smell the markers and hear the sound of their pinwheel when it spins, their visual, tactile, auditory, and olfactory systems have all been engaged and are firing off information to the brain. And as the students complete their pinwheel with the uplifting sense of accomplishment as it begins to spin, they reflect back on the devastating disease called tuberculosis that once brought people from all over the country to Fort Stanton. So, how could a child's toy benefit a person sick with a lung disease? Well, he could work with a respiratory therapist who might instruct him to inhale and exhale ten times. The patient's mind would be completely focused on the act of breathing in and breathing out. Likewise, a patient who blows on a pinwheel is also exercising his lungs by breathing in and breathing out, but instead of being focused on the exercise or the pain associated with it, he's probably distracted by the act of making the pinwheel turn and watching how the colors and designs blend when it spins. The mental health benefit comes from the act of creating something. The patient has control over the colors he chooses and the design that he creates, and for a patient stuck in a hospital room or in one of those small tuberculosis huts, these pinwheels might bring some color and fun into the environment. Even on days when he didn't have the strength to blow the pinwheel, he might place it in a flower box and let the wind lift his spirits. That's what occupational therapy does. It helps fix what's physically broken as well as fixing the mind and the soul. Would you like to learn how to make a pinwheel with me? It's fun and easy and doesn't require too many supplies, so let's give it a whirl. Speaking of whirls, did you know that if we had been making this pinwheel in 1855 when Fort Stanton was established, we wouldn't have referred to it as a pinwheel, but it would have been known as a whirly gig. <laughs> In the 1800s, any child's toy that was driven by the wind when held aloft by a running child was known as a whirligig. It wasn't until 1919 that a Boston toy maker named Seymour gave his whirligigs the name Wind Wheel, and eventually the name evolved into Pinwheel. The Chinese get the credit for the first documented use of whirligigs, though. Would you believe that the first documented whirligig comes from China in 400 BC? That means that whirligigs are older than Jesus. <laughs> whirligigs are still used today during Chinese New Year's celebrations to symbolize turning one's luck around. Whirligigs even started to show up in European paintings as early as the 1400s. And later, even George Washington is said to have brought them home from the battlefront during the Revolutionary War. Today, pinwheels symbolize abstract concepts such as unseen energy, patriotism, spiritual energy, and childhood innocence. And nothing says summer like a whirligig just blowing in the breeze. So let's learn how to make our very own whirligig. You are going to need a sheet of heavy paper, such as construction paper, 
scrapbook paper or cardstock, one pencil with an attached eraser, not one of those cap erasers that you can add on to your pencil, but a pencil, pencil eraser that's built in. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a ruler and a glue stick. You can use regular glue if you don't have a glue stick, but you'll just have to hold your pieces in place a little bit longer to make them stick. All right. So we're going to begin with a sheet of construction paper or cardstock, and you want to choose a thicker, heavier paper if you can because it will make a sturdier whirligig. If you can't find a thicker piece of paper, that's okay. You can still make a whirligig. Just use your glue stick to glue two sheets of notebook or printer paper together. This will make it heavier and sturdier, and it'll make a better whirligig. Then you want your paper to be a square rather than a rectangle. Most sheets of paper come shaped like a rectangle, so to turn that rectangle into a square, take a bottom corner of one of the short ends and bring it up diagonally to meet the side edge of the paper. Crease the paper along this diagonal line, and then you're going to cut off the top of the rectangle, and when you unfold it, you should then have a square. Okay. Fold your paper diagonally again, bringing the other corner up to the opposite corner, and crease. Now when you unfold, you should have two creases that form an X. Use your ruler to measure out two inches from the center of your X. Make a small mark on each of your four creases at the two inch point. Now I'm about to give you a very important instruction, so pay close attention. <laughs> Use your scissors to cut along the crease from one corner of the square to the mark that you made. You do not want to cut all the way to the center of your square or you will have major problems, so just cut from the corner to the two inch mark and stop. Once you have cut in from all four corners, you will see that your square now appears as four triangles connected in the center. Now use your glue stick to make a sticky spot right in the center of your X. Then take the right corner on the bottom triangle, which is closest to you, and fold it up toward the center. Hold it on the sticky spot for a few seconds until it's stuck, but don't crease it. Now turn your whirligig one quarter turn to the next triangle and put another dab of glue in the center of your X. Just like before, take the bottom right corner and stick it to the center. Okay, turn your whirligig one quarter turn again and repeat until all four corners meet in the middle. Be sure that you always bring the bottom right corner of the triangle to the center if you don't, your whirligig is going to look funny and it won't twirl properly. Okay, we're almost there. Now, put the pencil flat on the table in front of you and carefully push the pointy side of your pen through the front center of your whirligig. Be very careful not to poke your fingers as you're pushing the pen through. Make sure you clear, clear the path. And then put the eraser, on, put the pen into the eraser on your pencil. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Try out your whirligig by blowing into the air pockets between the blades. And if your whirligig isn't turning, you may be blowing the wrong way. So just try turning it around and blowing it from the opposite direction. And if your whirligig is still having trouble getting its spin on, it probably is bumping up against the pencil. So you can fix this by reinserting the pin at a slight upward angle on the eraser or by placing a small craft bead on the pin in between the pinwheel and the eraser. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed learning about the healing era in Fort Stanton's history, check out the extended version of this lesson entitled Fort Stanton Helps Save the World. In this video, you will learn much more about how tuberculosis has plagued human beings for centuries 
and how contributions by the doctors and nurses at Fort Stanton helped eradicate this dreaded disease. The video, as well as accompanying lesson plan and classroom activities, can be found at www.NewMexicoHistoricSites.org under the Virtual Classroom tab, then select Fort Stanton Virtual Classroom. The videos are also available on our YouTube channel for New Mexico Historic Sites. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a whirligig of a summer.